Okay, so thank you everybody for being there for this new session of uh, WIP seminar. Uh, this year, I think this time, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Pierre Walkers, that will talk to us about uh, negotiation for science in plant uh, genetic resources, demonstration for genetic resources. So it's uh, plant power politics. Mm. And uh, he's part of the uh, ISP FNRS in the uh, jury. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Kevin, uh, for the introduction, uh, for the invitation. It's a real pleasure for me to present my research uh, in front of philosophers. Uh, and it's also a real pleasure for me to be back in uh, the philosophy faculty because I, I was previously a student here um, for a short moment and it was during COVID, so I wasn't there <laughs> a lot. But uh, yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to discuss uh, some part of my PhD with you. Um, my PhD is in law, but I also have a lot of philosophical questions in it. Uh, and the, the main focus uh, of my PhD is the role and function of scientific arguments in politics and law uh, instead of legal or political arguments. And all with scientific evidence, uh, scientific discourse or narrative, you can frame uh, the discussion and provide scientific answer where it's also not only uh, scientific questions. Uh, the presentation that I will uh, propose you is some part of, the, um, uh, of my PhD. It's more uh, the context and some of my analysis. Uh, and it's not the solution that I, I want to propose. And if we have the time, we can discuss on it. But I will for, uh, mostly look at uh, the problem uh, of using science instead of law or instead of scientific arguments and the rhetoric or epistocratic use of science. Um, I, uh, my research will be so in the intersection between science and law uh, and science and political uh, discussion uh, within a critical discourse analysis. Uh, I will look and what my material will be, uh, uh, I will focus on discourses from states and states actor, from delegates, officials within negotiation and all these actors within negotiation will use and claim scientific evidence or scientific truths in the negotiation. My focus, and it's my research question, is something very technical, so I don't mind to, to be in, interrupted for a technical question uh, on this matter because uh, I think because we have the time, I will try to go in the details of my case study and uh, it, I want to be sure to be understood. And it, it is the digital seconds information uh, in a nutshell, uh, the term digital seconds information is a placeholder term for all the information that you can have from a genetic resource. Uh, and the international framework of genetic resource was intended to share or to uh, put legal obligation to genetic resource and we don't know if this uh, legal framework will also apply to this genetic information, this digital sequence information. So all the information that we can have from the genetic resource, we don't know if it will be covered by this legal framework. And it's within this discussion that I'm uh, looking how actors, a state actor, will use scientific argument to define what is a genetic resource, what is not, and it will impact the legal uh, application of the application of the legal framework. Um, I have in this research the, uh, the question of how scientific arguments will shape or uh, frame the, uh, the negotiation. Uh, I have uh, an interdisciplinary approach with uh, legal philosophy, philosophy of science, or at least I try to uh, use uh, some concept of philosophy of science. I would be very happy to discuss them and sociology of law. Uh, within this research, I will look to comparison of uh, states' position. I have looked to position paper uh, before negotiation and observed uh, real negotiation. Um, and I have three main questions, but I will develop it later. 
the central finding that I want to highlight there, it's the first one, there is a, a epistocratic use of science. Uh, so it's the, we, I use the concept of epistocracy to, to say that it's, uh, you justify a political position uh, with scientific argument or scientific rhetoric. And with this discussion, there is, or there are a lot of states that claim a position to be uh, based on science, based on evidence, but the position suits their interests and there is then uh, a strategic and rhetorical use of science. And what I want also to highlight uh, is that there are inconsistency within keys uh, and, uh, and subjects. Uh, because when, there will, when states have different interests, they will not use science in the same way. Um, and I will uh, present some uh, dif divergence in uh, discourse analysis within uh, medical and virus genetic sequence data and plant genetic sequence data. And because states don't have the same interest with plants with the, and with virus, they will have uh, different and uh, contradictory use of scientific narrative for the same data or the same subject. Um, so look to the background. Uh, I'm studying the seeds or the genetic resource regime complex. Uh, it's a the term regime complex is uh, from uh, international relation uh, analysis to say that there are different rules and um, organization that provide uh, regulation rules on the same topics with differ divergence uh, or contradictory interest. Uh, just to, to provide you an example, plant genetic resources for agriculture are covered by uh, international instruments uh, of intellectual property rights, but they are also covered by some uh, instrument of access and benefit sharing. Uh, so and it's there that I, I will look in details. Uh, so the rules that uh, put in place um, the possibility for my country to access or a company to access genetic resources, but also when they uh, produce something uh, of commercial interest of this genetic resource, they have to share the benefits from it. Uh, and there are also other rules uh, from uh, supra national regulation. But for example, in Europe, we have the variety registration, the access to the markets, uh, also sanitary re regulation. Uh, so regime, the regime complex is to understand that we have different rules with coming from different organizations and with different objectives of the same subject. So we, we might see some case where we have two rules that will say E or B for the same subject. So it's very difficult for some uh, um, um, actors to either know the rules, but also to um, to claim their uh, right if there are a contradictory right uh, against. Um, but and uh, my main focus is on the access and benefit sharing rules. We have the Convention of Biological Diversity, who is the main treaty for all the genetic resources. And I'm also looking for a specialized instrument, the Plant Treaty, or International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Agriculture, with a specialized instrument for seeds or plant genetic resources for agriculture. But we have also different specialized instruments. Uh, we have the PIP framework for Pandemic Influenza Preparedness Framework, with a non-legally binding instrument for uh, sharing influenza viruses. And we have recently, uh, the, uh, a, a, it's the Marine Genetic Resource Treaty Beyond National Jurisdiction was adopted uh, in June. We have the pandemic uh, treaty which ne negotiated, uh, will be negotiated next month. So we have, even within this ABS, uh, access and benefit sharing uh, framework, we have different uh, sub-treaties and sub-instruments for each kind of genetic resource. The problem and uh, the subject that I'm looking at is the fragmentation of this genetic, uh, of this uh, regime complex because of the dematerialization of genetic resources or the DCI, the digital sequence information resource. 
the fact that from 20 years now we can uh, second genetic resource and upload the, the genetic information uh, in a public database that are op uh, open, uh, open source. These um, instruments are maybe bypassed by the use of just gen uh, dematerialized uh, genetic resource. We know our scientific research will mainly use uh, genetic resource in the form of genetic information and will not go uh, to uh, the physical genetic resource and they will not activate this access and benefits sharing rules. Um, we should note that the term G uh, DSI, or digital sequence information, is a placeholder in the uh, term in the negotiation within the plant treaty and the convention on biological diversity. But we also have different uh, and con uh, conflicting terms that are also used. For example, some states argue for genomic sequence information, which is more used in the scientific uh, literature, but have a less, um, uh, a small, a narrow, a, a scope with narrow. Uh, and within the, the term claim, the scope of, of application of the, uh, the regulation will vary. And so some states will argue for a scientific evident, uh, a scientific based term, but because it also suits the interest of having a narrow instrument. Uh, and also this negotiation where um, mainly using science also to um, frame the negotiation because the Convention of Biological Diversity also asks a lot of uh, scientific evidence and uh, studies to help states to understand and to negotiate. Uh, this is a, an example of what uh, DSI could mean. Uh, the, f the fact that with a physical sample we can um, have digital sequence information and we don't know what the scope could be. Uh, in fact, it's something that is uh, still open to discussion because it could also um, be only uh, DNA and RNA, but it can be uh, metabolic information, protein information, but also traditional knowledge. And there is another question, um, uh, the fact that we will regulate only what Western science will understand as something uh, real information and we will put the traditional knowledge without any protection. Either it's also this kind of knowledge who is used uh, to understand some plants or understand some genetic resource or to commercialize some aspect of this genetic resource. So within this de uh, definition there will have divergence of what the real science uh, uh, that is used and what we want to acknowledge as something really uh, scientific. Uh, just to show you how simple is it to now use this digital sequence information. This is a, a plant that uh, I've taken a picture uh, in a conference. I just googled uh, or analyzed with my phone uh, for to know which plant it is and then <laughs> I put uh, the scientific name in the database and I, I could have access to different samples of um, this genetic sequence information. And I'm not a scientific, I, I don't know how to use it, but um, we can easily understand what could be interesting in these plants uh, without having to pay or to, to share the benefits of, I don't know, my vaccine, uh, my perfume, or any product that I, I will use from these plants. And within the international negotiation, we are sure because it's within the, the, um, the term of the treaty that it applies to physical sample, which we don't know or it's discussed. Um, if the treaty could be applicable to uh, digital sequence information, if we have to negotiate the treaty again, uh, uh, again to, um, to, to make it applicable to uh, this information, or if we, uh, uh, it, we, we, we are really in a, a situation where for now the treaty are not uh, pragmatically uh, um, 
used to, uh, to, to this information. We don't know if it could be uh, used. Or it is, this is a legal question and we have different opinion. I am in the opinion as my supervisor is uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, the treaty could be applicable uh, with a legal interpretation of what's the purpose of this treaty, what, is, uh, uh, what it was supposed to cover, and we can apply this treaty directly and without negotiation on the digital seconds information. But for now, there are a lot of discussion from around uh, 10 years. Uh, so going now on the study of the negotiation on the DSI, we can first of all see that there will be a double uh, fragmentation of the regime complex. So on the slide here we have a figure where we have the main the umbrella treaty for biologic resources, the convention of uh, biological for the biological diversity, uh, who is split in different uh, specialized instruments. So as the plant treaty, the, uh, a treaty uh, the peat treaty, the uh, marine genetic resource treaty. Uh, there are a lot of so a, a first fragmentation with different specialized instruments for each kind of genetic resource, with a little bit uh, difficult in practice because if you use uh, this kind of uh, database, you will have uh, all genetic resources uh, and without any um, connection of the treaty that is supposed to regulate this genetic resource. Like we don't know if it's. Uh, uh, plant genetic resource, a marine genetic resource, uh, uh, virus. Uh, we we just look to something as genetic resource, and we don't put in the different uh, cases. But there is this different uh, the second fragmentation with this digital sequence information because each different treaty uh, or instrument will try to provide a framework to encompass or not the side. And we, we have a situation where, of course, there is the CBD with the umbrella treaty and who leads uh, approximately some main uh, paths to regulate DSI. But some treaty have the specialized definition of what is that DSI <coughs> or uh, have the, the, they have a more advanced or less advanced discussion on this topic. And we will have different uh, definition of what's DSI be negotiated at the same time in different fora. And my research was on uh, how science was used to define what's genetic resource in this negotiation, but also how science was used to make an argument in the uh, in this discussion uh, whether uh, DSI could be uh, within the scope of the treaty or if DSI could be uh, or should be or if the treaty should be renegotiated to encompass the SI. Um, this is a picture where I was uh, last November. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend uh, one of the negotiations of the plant treaty, uh, and just to it's negotiation where they need to have the unanimity uh, on the term, and just to like to to show you all. It's, it's complicated to try to find an agreement because all this, th th there were three or four hours of discussion if we want to welcome, recognize, or take notes of the <laughs> CBD decision on uh, genetic uh, on DSI because the the plant treaty didn't want it to acknowledge uh, to term DSI. They wanted to use GSD uh, because uh, some party uh, in this case it was the US. Uh, we were not part of the, uh, not party to the CBD. Wanted to have the de uh, definition of um, of GSD, genetic sequence data, instead of DSI. Uh, so, just to to show you how it's tricky sometimes. Uh, and on the negotiation on DSI, the ha uh, ha yeah, uh, just before uh, and to show how is it now urgent or how it's uh, like a hot topic because. Here we have the amount of DSI uploaded in uh, public database, and uh, COP is the conference of the party of the CBD. Uh, the GB is the uh, governing body of the plant treaty. And uh, yeah, 
uh, one cup after another, the amount of DSI is increasing. Uh, and the question is really now on the table. Um, and there is uh, a real north south opposition within this DSI negotiation. Uh, because, in fact, the treaty, uh, the, com uh, the Convention on Biological Diversity, was adopted in a post colonial manner. Or, uh, genetic resource was acknowledged as um, uh, from uh, of the sovereignty of states because before it was a uh, common uh, uh, common material of humanity and everyone could uh, um, try to, to to extract genetic information and genetic resource and there was a real um, uh, motivation to protect states from and to uh, give them the possibility to protect the genetic resource. And now with this, uh, with this DSI technology, uh, they don't have this possibility to, to, free, uh, to, to regulate the access on this genetic resource because the plants with in Brazil, for example, is now uploaded on a database and we can use it without um, asking the permission of Brazil. Uh, and as I said, uh, there is because it's a highly technical discussion, there are a lot of call for a science-based policy and science-based discussion. A lot of states within their position paper uh, present themselves as scientific uh, and they want to have this scientific uh, political uh, uh, proposition, but only we can see that with, uh, while using the scientific position and scientific argument, they really want to defend a uh, political argument or a uh, 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 legal argument that, for example, uh, this uh, DSI is not part of the treaty, it's not applicable, uh, uh, the treaty is not uh, applicable to DSI, uh, but it's a legal interpretation that is to discuss because we have different legal interpretation, even with different countries who don't agree on that. And calling, uh, calling this position a scientific, it's a way of what um, uh, I think it's a way to avoid this legal or political discussion. Um, and uh, just to before going uh, on uh, the case study, uh, for now, uh, the last COP of the Convention of uh, Biological Diversity agreed to use the term DSI as a placeholder term, just to, to, to make the negotiation on it and don't lose time. Uh, on this subject, but in the plan treaty, there, there is no this uh, willingness to use both the term either of DSI and genetic sequence information. Uh, and just to present uh, uh, that, that there are a lot of difference between the two terms used because um, it's it covers different um, kind of information and. Yeah, it's it, it just uh, something very different because uh, DSI could also cover, for example, traditional knowledge uh, uh, or uh, ecological and uh, interaction and information. And that there is discussion if we want to regulate also this kind of knowledge. Um, and what I want to highlight before showing you some case study is that there is a uh, rhetoric or epistocratic use of science within this uh, negotiation. Um, we have also to be attentive of uh, the difference between all the movement from, uh, for example, uh, uh, science, and technological, uh, science and technology studies uh, and the difference, within, uh, of, uh, the difference uh, with uh, the transcendental truths that are claimed, because some party will use like science to, I mean, to impose a reap of a transcendental truth and do not discuss about scientific evidence. And from what we have seen from philosophy of science, that science is something constructed, something to be dis uh, that is to be dis uh, discussed. And so using science as an objective and neutral truth, it's not a good way to respect science. And it's not also a good way to respect politics. Um, I want also to um, to look to this question from uh, the ontological tone perspective. So, 
we have maybe a, a resurgence of only a Western type of science who are acknowledged in these discussions, uh, and we don't look to traditional knowledge or other ports, uh, other epistemic proposition as something uh, that is also to be considered. Um, and from what I will try to, to show you with my case study, is there is uh, a trend to use uh, scientific data to justify decision and interpretation, but it's not something that is constant. And uh, states may contradict themselves while using science. Another discussion uh, that um, we could have uh, in something that I, I will have to look in further research is uh, another argument based on science. Is that is, it is the following. Uh, some actors, it's more uh, non-state actors, scientific actors or uh, com um, companies, uh, they want to, uh, and they argue that the site should remain open uh, and open access without any fees in order to not prevent the progress of science. And we have this idea of the progress of science being the main objective of humanities that would benefit to all, but on the same time, there is a, a digital divide within country, or not all the country would be able to be benefit in the same manner of this uh, information. Uh, like, not all the country have the same uh, capacity to produce GMOs within this uh, design and open access. Uh, and so, it's an argument that is also very situated within a, a context, and we have to also look, uh, have that in consideration. Even more, if we want to have this design in open access, and without uh, replying to the rules of access and benefit sharing, who are supposed to uh, give some benefit sharing, so monetary or non-monetary uh, contribution to help countries that don't have the same capabilities uh, in scientific um, uh, uh, production. Uh, and if you, you call for an open access, but you don't give some uh, um, uh, retribution, it's something that we have to, to be critical on it, my opinion uh, on it. Uh, so going on the case study, the first one, uh, and it's why uh, I take times, I took times on the terminology, is on the scope of DSI. If we use DSI or GSD, um, and we can see that uh, there is within the definition of scope a science-based policy uh, rhetoric is used. But from what uh, I want to highlight is that the science-based policy is at stake uh, and party uh, really want to impose their definition on the SI because it will be convenient to them. Um, and some parties are really uh, aware of that and assume it within their position paper. For example, uh, at the US uh, states that GSD are neither genetic material or a genetic resource, and it's another discussion if these I are a genetic resource or a genetic material, and if they are part of the treaty because of if they fit in the definition, but they are within the scope of the treaty. And so uh, for uh, uh, the US, it's essential to maintain a conceptual definition, uh, conceptual and definitional distinction between genetics uh, material and uh, itself and data associated with that material. And on the other hand, the views, for example, uh, was uh, this view was criti criticized by South Africa, who uh, for that they really want to make a definition. We who make a uh, reference to the genetic material, uh, the genes of the genetic materials who constitute a genetic resource. Uh, the African Union Commission uh, uh, denounced that the, the goal on focus on terminology is to narrow the scope of applicability of the Nagoya Protocol. Uh, Nagoya Protocol is part of the um, Convention of Biological Diversity uh, and have on certain subject matter excluded from it. Um, I've, taken, uh, an uh, I've undertaken an analysis of the state sub submission uh, of so their position paper on the last uh, conference of the party to the CBD, and I've compared uh, what 
they wanted to propose as terminology uh, their justification if they were grounded on scientific uh, justification or if they, they use some other argument and if it will have an impact on the definition on the two other question and the two other question is if the DSI are part of the definition of genetic material so are part of the definition of the treaty and if DSI could, uh, should be um, part of the access and benefit sharing rules uh, and from what I have seen is that when you use scientific justifications and you want to um, uh, and when you argue that it's not, not something uh, exclusive, uh, always related but when you argue also to uh, the term genetic sequence data you might be more uh, keen to uh, argue for a deregulation of DSI. So DSI is not part of genetic material definition and this is not, uh, should not respond to access and benefits rules. And on the contrary, some uh, terminology who use more the term information instead of data, uh, so digital sequence information, uh, are also uh, more keen to make a link between genetic, uh, digital sequence information and genetic material and between digital sequence information and access and benefit sharing. And I have looked to another um, uh, sphere uh, of the genetic resource fishing complex uh, to look to other negotiation and on the PIP framework that I mentioned earlier on influenza viruses there was also a negotiation on genetic sequence data, DSI, actually. Uh, the, the framework acknowledged uh, and defines what this uh, genetic sequence data uh, when it was adopted, but they didn't uh, put any rules on access and benefit sharing uh, for this data. And for some authors, uh, GSD was not a real phenomena uh, when the PIP was adopted. Uh, it was something more marginal at the time. And because GSD DSI was more uh, used uh, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the last 20 years, there was some question of renegotiation of the uh, PIP framework. Um, and what I could see is that some states who present the position paper in the three uh, instance, uh, the three instruments, the plant treaty, the uh, CBD, the Convention on Biological Diversity, and the PIP framework, they will have some contradiction uh, on the position. Because uh, I have looked to, and it's only the three states that I, I could see some, it's only the three states that have given a position paper for the three instance, that they are very close and uh, they don't want to uh, acknowledge that DSI could be part of the uh, definition of genetic materials, but they were more open uh, to, 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 to consider DSI within the definition of biological material uh, in the PIP framework. Uh, and it was uh, even more clear with the negotiation on access and benefit sharing where uh, these same states were very um, closed on the inclusion of DSI within the access and benefit framework uh, uh, in the plant treaty, the Convention on Biological Diversity, are suddenly open, or where, because it, it was previously a previous negotiation, uh, they are really open and <coughs> um, uh, they are scared of but they are really open uh, to include this genetic sequence data within an access and benefit sharing framework within the PIP framework. And that's why I argue that there are contradictions because uh, now some states are claiming that this uh, regime cannot be neg uh, should be uh, should, uh, cannot include the SI uh, that presuppose negotiation, but before they were very, they had very open uh, position on this subject. So that's, uh, that concludes my uh, analysis that we, we can see similar um, discursive patterns 
when there is a science-based policy that is used, but it's also an, uh, to reinforce position that suits member states. Uh, that, but it's more on the topic itself, the term used will uh, influence the, 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 the contents and the definition that we want to, uh, to, to, to put in place. Um, and the position on the, the term will also influence uh, the question of genetic material and access and benefit sharing. Uh, and on the two last subject, I could uh, see some contradiction between position of different of same states on different subjects. Uh, and it was even more clear on access and benefit sharing because these tests were very open to include this genetic sequence uh, data in the access and benefit uh, sharing framework, while now they really want to impose clear code position that is not applicable. Uh, this is my material, so the, the links from the state's position paper. Uh, and I really thank you for your attention.
decide if you're the chair. No, no, we're discussing something else. Yeah, we have a lot of time. So, so questions? Max says hi from the internet. Ah, hi. <laughs> hi <Max. laughs> he doesn't have a question yet, but he says hi from the internet. <laughs> well, aka. Okay, yeah, okay. I have a nice okay, okay, if, 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 always question. So, so, could you elaborate a little bit in your case study mm -hmm. the way they use science, science facts or data or things? Um, as a rhetorical tool, is it close to other kind of a, a universal authorities, so like moral arguments or things like that? How, how do they use that in particular? What is specific in that kind of rhetorical scientific tool compared to other kind of arguments they use in the, in the negotiation? Um, I don't know yet if there are any uh, specific use of science that is different from other okay. uh, in the uh, design negotiation that differ from other negotiations that are also highly technical. Uh, uh, I'm also looking for example to the GMOs and NGT uh, discussion. Uh, there is a legislative proposal uh, within the EU uh, uh, market. Uh, but uh, I haven't free, uh, looked or defined a specific use of science on this negotiation. I, I could see that there are similar pat uh, pattern mm -hmm. on the uh, use of science to uh, define what the science and that is not a genetic resource or yet. And we can see that we will have different um, paper from. Uh, it is uh, an uh, instrument uh, to secretariat to provide studies where they could see that, ah, scientifically speaking, uh, it could be or not, but it's not the question. Uh, there are all uh, uh, scientific but legal paper uh, or uh, legal analysis from this um, uh, secretariat who said that, ah, it could be. Uh, or it could be uh, part of the um, of the instrument, but it, it should be decided. So, um, well, I, I haven't seen a theoretical use of science or way to use science different than in another in other discussion uh, from. Uh, the, the resource that I'm using is more from uh, Latour, Stenger, so Araway, who they, they highlight a certain way of, of using science uh, within hybrid case uh, to try to avoid or, uh, public and uh, political discussion. And I could see similar patterns. Uh, I will have a look. Oh, it's something that I have to, to look. So it seems yeah. like a source of authority. Yeah, yeah, uh, for universal. So it's not, it's not my interest. It's but often uh, the the thing that they are doing uh, science based uh, review or science based analysis of the treaty, and it's not, uh, for example, the position of Canada. Is, often use science um, as an argument, but they don't go, it's maybe uh, uh, something specific. I don't know if it's specific on this case, but maybe specific on international uh, mm -hmm. negotiation, but they don't go, they don't reference anything for that. They just say that it's scientific, uh, proven that it's not or it is a, a, a genetic uh, resource. Um, uh, for example, and uh, I will maybe look uh, after that to, to, to show some definition of the, the treaty, but uh, they want to say, ah, uh, the genetic materials is uh, uh, the genetic, ma about the genetic resource is the genetic material uh, uh, of actual or potential value. And the genetic material is, uh, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, I don't know it by heart, the genetic material is the material that contained uh, the unit, the functional unit of heredity. And they said that, okay, this decided does not contain the functional unit of heredity. And so they are not applicable uh, 
But mm -hmm. if you look at that from a scientific perspective, it's still to be discussed because mm -hmm. it's also very vague, this functional element of heredity. And if you look to the history of the negotiation, it was intended to be vague because different interpretation, and the negotiator didn't know what was the meaning and they just wanted to put that to have a uh, science-based definition of what is a plant, and they don't want it to define it as a plant, uh, because in previous uh, instrument there was another definition. So, so and, uh, and we can see some uh, commentary from states who just say that Okay, uh, one of the main uh, commentaries is that oh, uh, it's, it is a genetic material, so material must be physical, then it's not applicable, it's scientifically not applicable to the uh, genetic resource. And they don't know define, but they don't explore this argument, uh, they don't um, uh, use any reference uh, for that. Uh, they just saying out loud that their interpretation that they don't go into details. Uh, and another part of the, um, my research uh, is uh, legal analysis of the treaty uh, and applic uh, applying the rules of interpretation in international law. And that's this question of genetic material and the term material is not a problem itself to encompass information that are not material in itself. Because uh, it's, um, to, oh, it's going on the details there, but uh, material is used as a noun and not as an adjective. And so as a noun, it can be a container, for example, or it's not, it's not supposed to be physical. And when we look to the history of the negotiation, it was not mean to be physically, uh, um, it was not meant to be only physical. Of course, it was not meant to encompass uh, physical data because they were not existing or, or widely used at the time. But if you applied uh, uh, ratiologies of the treaty, it could be discussed. And it's the other part of, of another part of my research where I'm um, looking to the history of the negotiation of the treaty or what they wanted to uh, regulate, what was the intention of uh, or the main idea of genetic resource. And if you look it from a uh, um, action-based uh, perspective, the, the treaty wanted to regulate scientific use of genetic resource. And if we, if before we, we used physical genetic resource and now we use only uh, 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 immaterial genetic resource, but the, the, the scientific action and the ratiologists could be the applicable to the two materials. So. But thank you for all the question. I, I, I hope that uh, I have I more. <laughs> I have one for I have one for Max. Um, can you see differences in the scientific arguments between countries used depending on nature conservation needs? So how does conservation come into to DSI? Uh, within conservation, it's another argument that is used in the uh, negotiation because uh, my focus on this I was more on the access and benefit sharing rules so more the equity within pay, uh, country uh, on the access to their genetic resource and to uh, give them a, a fair compensation mm -hmm. but this uh, instrument also regulate for some uh, the plant treaty or the convention of biological diversity also regulate uh, the uh, conservation part. And there, DSI is also a wonderful tool to identify the genetic resource, the plants, and to help the conservation. And we could see at the CBD, um, I haven't found it yet for the plant treaty, uh, some actors who acknowledge or to want to, they want to keep DSI open access as a tool to, uh, to have a better conservation uh, of this genetic resource, to enforce this conservation. Uh, but uh, you, and I'm still on the access and benefit sharing uh, perspective, they are using this argument to keep it op open access, mm -hmm. while uh, 
they, they're using the conservation arguments to restrain the open access, uh, the access and benefit sharing uh, part of the treaty uh, of the instrument, while the objective of the treaty are the <coughs> the, com the both both are the uh, objective of the treaty and they have to be complementary. No, thank you very much. Questions? I have one of my own. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so this this move, I guess, I guess this is a tough question because it sort of is asking you to. It, I don't know. I don't know where you'd have evidence for this. I don't know if you've ever had evidence for this. But when they are using scientific arguments, and, and it really looks like they are doing it to avoid making the just sort of basic political or legal argument for their inter the interest of their country, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess, I don't even know how to phrase this, like, how well does it work? Like, do the other negotiators, when they hear that argument, they're like, of course that's what you would say, you mm -hmm. know, you're South Africa, or you know, you're the United States. Um, or does it, or does the fact, I guess maybe this is the, 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 the subtle way to put the question, does the fact that they're couching it in the scientific language change the way that the other regulators respond to the arguments that they make? Mm -hmm. no, that's a, a good question and I have some elements to answer. But I don't think I have all the time. It's hard because I mean you'd almost have to like read their minds to know yeah, for real. Yeah. I mean they're not going to say that out loud. Obviously, that would not be very diplomatic. Mm. <laughs> no, no. For example, do you do you answer to a scientific argument always with a counter scientific argument, or could you use yeah? But my interest is blah blah blah. Okay, uh, I will try to give different ar uh, arguments or, or elements. That may be contradictory, uh, <laughs> but uh, from different perspectives that I've looked at. Uh, first of all, uh, we should <coughs> bear in mind that these negotiations are not a scientific congress. They don't listen, uh, like they are talking, talking, but they don't listen to uh, each other <laughs> till the end. <laughs> uh, at the moment, they will listen to, to them because they want to have, have an agreement, but on the position paper, it's something that they want to, uh, and in the first statement, they want to express their positions in a very strong manner. And in order to, it's not the moment where uh, they are the most constructive. Um, so one of the elements. Another is there is this kind of uh, black box of negotiation or scientific argument. Uh, so they will have the public speech of this is scientific, this is my position, and then we have, and it's difficult, unless impossible, to do it even as a researcher. We have to dig to ask uh, to, to, to for, for information. Or wh why do you say that like that? Why do you don't elaborate with that? Uh, I haven't succeeded yet for the plan treaty, but uh, I could have some uh, insight from the uh, European Commission uh, mm -hmm. uh, because it was also part of my research where uh, some legislation were, were uh, presented as based on science and only an, uh, an argument to like they want to, to, to make this legislation to implement this legislation to, to regulate it in a scientific friendly manner but when you go off or, or have a meta discussion or in a in a informal interview they say that no no it's convenient because there is we want to have these political goals but science or other arguments are very uh, convenient for that um, and going back to the negotiation uh, of uh, the CBD and the plan treaty and it's argument that it's not from my research, it's from uh, colleagues or other articles that I've seen, is that the one of uh, my colleagues looked at it from also the narrative perspective, uh, and they highlight that there is this scientific narrative used by uh, states from uh, the global north um, when it's convenient to them, 
uh, from industry and from um, uh, from academic uh, academia uh, because as academic we can uh, be present on the negotiation on the negotiation we can also speak uh, it's depending from which organizations some are more open and some are more close to it uh, but there is this kind of scientific sphere uh, or scientific narrative sphere while other country will not reply within the scientific question, but more on the uh, social or fair, uh, fair and uh, for, uh, the social injustice arguments, uh, in, uh, injustice narrative, uh, the put in place of traditional knowledge recognition, uh, and it's different narrative that maybe coexist within the same uh, fora without one replying to another on the same argument. Uh, sure. And the last one is uh, another argument on the trust and mistrust of scientific narrative within this negotiation. Uh, it has been seen that uh, this negotiation where uh, art is for was a pl place where there was a lot of scientific paper and arguments uh, used in the negotiation and they don't have the same so country, they don't, the, the country don't have the same use of scientific argument uh, before or at least before the treaty uh, I could see some report of the negotiation of the treaty and some delegation from northern uh, from uh, northern states have their own scientific delegation to produce arguments that are convenient to them to say that okay uh, this is a genetic resource that we have to regulate um, and there was uh, at the moment the question of uh, uh, what's, uh, what's raw and uh, cooked material <laughs> okay, and sure. the northern wanted to, to have uh, sure. like saying that every genetic resource who are not uh, breed by northern company have to be considered as raw material and should be freely accessible and for that they wanted and they used a lot of scientific arguments and uh, the, uh, the secretariat of this instrument, uh, this treaty, also provides negotiators with their own scientific evidence. And so we could see, uh, and from this uh, uh, report, they didn't identify some uh, scientific uh, delegation of global South country at the time. Now it, it, it's different, and now the Northern states don't use their own scientific body. They also rely on uh, the main of the scientific argument from the uh, secretariat. It's more centralized, and this question of centralization could be also discussion uh, uh, a subject of discussion because we try to have mm. one idea of science and we don't use science in contradictory and different perspective. And if we take a, a uh, another philosophy of science <coughs> in mind, or uh, uh, for example, a uh, wave perspective or situated knowledge. It could be interesting to see science from a country and science from another country leading to contradictory position, but with scientific explanation and uh, development. The last point I want to, to maybe highlight is on the mistress of science from uh, more the uh, indigenous population and uh, local communities where uh, on this subject genetic resource, seeds, um, GMOs, there were a lot of industry and company from uh, the north that used the science as a rhetoric to also define what's a genetic resource, what, uh, what is not, also take some valueless or presented as valueless genetic resource or genetic uh, knowledge, translate it within the uh, knowledge that fits the Western canon and the Western uh, intellectual property system, and then uh, have the possibility to appropri uh, appropriate this knowledge or this seed. So there is from this um, uh, EPLC, uh, indigenous people and local communities groups, are really mistress of science. And so using science as an argument, it's not something that is uh, uh, neutral and accepted as a, uh, a scientific truth because there is this question of colonization, 
biopiracy, where science ha uh, was used in a, was a central piece of this instrument. I just saw it's a good day to be talking about this. It's, it's World Intellectual Property Day. We got that <laughs> today. From, today? From Adrien, yes. Journée mondiale. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's a good day to it's a good day to be skeptical. Yeah. Um, and the other day saying that you, we should have them dead. Oh, of course, <laughs> everything. And thank you very much for the question. Sure, yeah, it's a great answer. Thanks so much. A lot of questions? None. Excellent. Still have one, but it's still in the same ball game since Max. It's because I don't see any connection between science and property rights. You know, and Mm -hmm. and intellectual rights it makes no sense. But it's always used in that context by business, for example, that want to protect their, their research. And so so how, how? Could you elaborate a little bit on the kind of arguments they use, scientific arguments? Or is it just not scientific, but just has the, the vernis mm. of the science? Because by by definition, even if you are in Araue or situated or non-situated science, science is open access. That, that, that's one of the value, primary value of the scientific enterprise, that's, that, that everything should be shared all the time. Mm -hmm. Because science does not work without data of someone else. But on the other hand, it seems in the response to Max, in the response to Shao, that property, intellectual rights and scientific arguments are often connected in these negotiations. So how, how does it work? How do you do it? I'm very curious about the kind of arguments they, mm. they provide or they try to convince other people. And uh, uh, it's something that uh, I'm not quite sure of the links that uh, I find between the, the two spheres. Uh, because I don't experience it, uh, and I haven't. Uh, it was not the, the first uh, part of my research it was more uh, on the science uh, as an argument of authority in law. Okay. It was more from uh, indigenous people uh, perspective mm -hmm. that they re uh, and from scholars from uh, this environment or the or interested in this uh, question that they really put links and strong links between science uh, and neutral science uh, or objective science within uh, the colonial and post-colonial uh, uh, history and also the question of appropriation and property on, the, on genetic resource. Um, one of the authors uh, is uh, Laureline White that uh, I use uh, a lot and she presents and criticizes uh, with the concept of biocolonialism, the use of science to uh, that may uh, devaluate traditional knowledge or indigenous people uh, perspectives on the genetic resource, uh, present it as value free or something not protected, and within the explanation of science. The, uh, I cannot pretend uh, or I cannot uh, really show the details of all, every, uh, on all the situation it was uh, done, but uh, there was first this question of what's uh, value as scientific, what's not, and then within this, uh, um, uh, uh, from the intellectual property law system, it's because it's also Western type of uh, uh, law system and idea of innovation or uh, of uh, uh, yeah, what's new inventive of subject of industrial uh, application from uh, the uh, criterion of the TRIPS, uh, trade related aspect, uh, or, well, one of the main instruments uh, on uh, that. Uh, but authors from uh, EPLC uh, or activists in, in this uh, sphere argue that there are Western specific type of innovation that are used and within science, it, science is also used to justify, like, be, because it, there is these links between science and technique mm -hmm. and 
it's because of science that we know things and we don't know how we can be uh, we can evaluate it uh, and pre uh, provide uh, put it in the intellectual property rights system uh, but if you do not valorize um, knowledge from uh, indigenous people they cannot be part also in know-how system and we don't know if the and it's argued that uh, it's not that uh, intellectual property rights system are not fit for uh, traditional knowledge or all kind of traditional knowledge because they, they really differ from communities. Uh, uh, but there are uh, some um, links from different perspectives saying that science will lead to techno science, uh, technique, and then invention. and and uh, protection. For example, on uh, breathing, uh, we have protection for... Uh, we can use that depending on where we are uh, in the legislative system, but plants or uh, biological material can be protected either through patents or through uh, 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 a certificate of obtention végétale in French. Uh, or I forgot, but uh, another instrument for uh, plant arthritis. Um, and this system cannot are not uh, you uh, made to protect variety of common knowledge, but if you can breed it with again this western uh, western type of breeding some materials, uh, you can protect the plants. But how do we define that plants who is breed or not? How do we acknowledge all the breed uh, for all, all, all the, the plants who were breed? Uh, through farmers from generation to generation and how do we put and why we should put uh, a schism between plants that are not innovation and uh, are not breed, uh, uh, where do we want to put an innovation and why so and there is this again science could be used as a way to okay this is a, a new plant this is a past plant uh, and it will be maybe not the same science within this uh, intellectual property uh, law system than in conservation and we will have science used to define what is uh, a plant when when it was like just a common knowledge plant and when it's now a new uh, kind of plant or no it's a new technique that is innovative and within this discussion all the 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 faculty to care uh, of the, uh, with the plants or to breed some plants from indigenous people and local communities are not acknowledged within this legal system. Uh, and yeah, but to, to conclude on, on, on my reply, there, there is no uh, like direct link, I would say, or from what I have looked at uh, for now, but it's always how it, it is used and how it could lead to some pro uh, protection and appropriation. And science denounce as a, mm -hmm. a tool to impose a truth, but also a tool to describe what is val uh, uh, no, legitimate knowledge and what's not. And then from, uh, from then the knowledge could lead to uh, know-how and to technique. So I'm, I'm jumping in just because Max has a question that actually follows right up on this really nicely. He was wondering how um, how plant hybrids, whether naturally occurring or not, are discussed in DSI negotiations? Are there discussions on how to constitute the borders of a given plant genetic resource? Because that comes right, that's right oh, about okay. You may have already sort of, you've already said some about your answer to this, but I don't know if you have more of an answer. Uh, I may be scared to reply that because uh, I, I think I haven't elucidated that point yet. And it's often this kind of discussion, like also like GMOs, or um, they are uh, part of the main discussion within this, uh, uh, these instruments. But it's more uh, discussion in silo, and DSI is one of the discussion, and so they, they don't discuss. Uh, I will I should, to reply. I should be on all the negotiation to, to look at, but the, the last one that I, I followed, there was no discussion related to that 
uh, but it could be I know that there was a lot of uh, literature on hybrid plants that may be an obstacle for mm. access and beneficiaring and also because within this treaty there are rights for farmers uh, and uh, notably the rights to reuse seeds uh, to uh, reuse farm seeds uh, and hybrid plants uh, or GMOs was something that who, uh, would block this right. Um, but recently there was this discussion on impact of DSI and farmers' rights. Um, but I haven't a result of that in mind. I know that there was a decision on that, but uh, I cannot answer and be sure to, that it will be okay. Fair enough. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I've, but I think you have already replied on what I just said implicitly. But um, I wanted to know or would you say that the status of authority of science comes from the fact that it's the science of these cultures? So it's a circle of legitimacy that the culture legitimizes science and legitimizes the culture, and there is this kind of uh, circle of legitimacy? Or would science, could science have? Um, have certain features that make it a legitimate authority for political discourses. Uh, uh, because you say that uh, you, you, they use science as a way to uh, validate their own uh, dichotomy of what is planned, but it's not. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so they, they, they see to have this kind of circle of legitimacy that culture and legitimate science and legitimate culture and that. So. Uh, in my opinion, it's a really good point. It's and I would say yes, but it's something I, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't, f and uh, I think it, it could be a view, but I haven't the uh, data or the faculty to have it acknowledged by the negotiator. I haven't, because I, I wanted to be very cautious on my uh, presentation and only show what um, states. Uh, stated or argued and uh, because and don't want I didn't want it to say what they didn't want it to say and so uh, <laughs> I'm very uh, careful with that but uh, I would say yes but fi finding a way to make it said by the people far from uh, by states it could be com complicated. Oh, I suppose, so I suppose that the discourse is about objectivity and value free and of course. Yeah, but it's, it's, and there is a, a strong uh, within negotiator, uh, uh, I would say that, that, that from the northern country, that there is still a very strong idea of, a naturalist idea of science, an objective idea of science. Uh, so I don't know if they're using also science in a very um, hypocritical manner or not. So depending, I, I would say that it strengthens their interest, but I think they may believe in science in, in uh, universal truths, just using science in uh, uh, a good way. Uh, it's something I, I don't know if I would be able to uh, uh, find it uh, with my legis uh, my. Um, uh, research or skills. Uh, I, I had when I was doing an uh, internship uh, at the European Commission, I had the opportunity to have discussion with another CAP uh, as an intern, and then I could see that there was from some actors uh, a strategic use and assumed strategic use of science to so that this legislation we have um, uh, we have good scientific arguments to. Uh, motivates this legislation and then we can use it. Uh, it's something that I would have to look to for or try to to find uh, within this negotiation but uh, uh, I think it's a, a, a really good and useful assumption uh, but now to to make it, to find it explicitly it could be difficult. No, I suppose that nobody wants to uh to tell them that they are an hypocrite, so uh, I suppose there are kind of uh, way to think. Just like it's a negotiation. You know, everybody knows that everybody is there to win. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah.
Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, a bit connected to this, I mean, I mean, this is one thing that I, there's a, there's kind of a funny tension that occurred to me as you were, as you were talking, which is, uh, just now, which is, there'd be a very natural way to interpret the difference between, for example, the difference between the positioning of the states in the agriculture treaties and the positioning of the states in the pandemic treaties. Right? And that would just be to say, well, the, the non-epistemic value situation in those two cases, the ethical value situation in those two cases is radically different, right? Uh, pretty straightforwardly. If we think we're trying to, you know, share influenza strains to prevent mass pandemic, you know, that's a different, it's, it's just like classic Heather Douglas stuff, right? This is not very exciting. But then there's a funny tension, right? Because that's what a philosopher of science would be very apt to say. But then I'm sure you're right that if you ask all of these negotiators, they would all say, oh, there's no, there's no values in our science. Mm -hmm. You know, science is universal and objective and value-free and very clean. And so there's, there's a funny tension there, I feel like, right? Where, where, and maybe the right answer is just to say, well, they are actually using values and they're just hiding them. Mm -hmm. but. But that's it's a it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting example of you know if we would all just be okay with the fact that sometimes there's values in our science and it's fine you know you would have a very natural way to understand what these countries were doing mm -hmm. in these negotiations right um, that that I guess what would we say it looks a lot more contradictory if you think, well, there's only one source of scientific truth, so it must either, it must be X, and so if you don't say X, it's contradictory, and then you have a big problem, right? You know, if you take a more sophisticated philosophy of science, you solve a lot of these problems, but then, yeah, the negotiators probably wouldn't be happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the tool will not be as strong. Right, right, right. It depends on which negotiator, because the Global North negotiator won't like that, but the Global South would like that. Because then True. They, could, they, could, they could legitimately say that the data and the science that you bring to a present to, 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 to sense is based on their no, 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 because it's a negotiation. So the use of science is that it has a source of authority. If science, everybody accepts that science is situated in a negotiation, no authority. Yeah. yeah they will, so, so you lose the power to use that tool. So you will use yeah, something just, else. So everybody will switch to something else. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's used to a so they won't be happy because they say, now our science of origins is recognized. It's never used in negotiation because it's not a source of authority. Because that's it's a source science. of authority because you, you've even if it's pretend, it's even if it's pretend, it's a universal source of authority. It's why one of my first questions was about that. You know, you use that as a source of authority because the other believes it's a source of authority. Because if it, if it's situated, I won't use it. Canada is using <laughs> science all the time because it looks like they don't defend Canadian stuff. <laughs> They seem to say universal stuff. So my guess would be that if everybody had a situated science conception, they would switch to other rhetorical tools that have a source of authority, moral one, or whatever, or religious one, because at least a lot of people share the same religion. Mm -hmm. But you see that uh, the issue that you that uh, Pierre uh, showed with uh, indigenous, indigenous uh, knowledge is that exactly they are not being, uh, they are being the knowledge as part of science. So if exactly. if, if, no, if no, you don't no. realize that science is situated at some points, then the, this part of knowledge are never part of uh, legitimized knowledge. It's kind of the issue. No, no, but so they are being oppressed by the same fact that they are not recognized as being knowledge. Uh, knowledge but absolutely, but it, it's better to recognize aboriginal knowledge and to defend philosophically a situated knowledge conception. I agree with that. I'm just saying, in negotiation treaty, if everybody agreed uh, on situated knowledge, they will not use these arguments anymore. Because they don't have authority. That, that's the point. The, the people who will go to a negotiation to defend their interests and to get a good treaty, hopefully win-win, but if I win and you lose, it's better than I lose and you win. Mm. Hopefully, win-win. 
So science is, science is a good tool, according to what you show to us, because it's, it sounds universal. It has an authority beyond the pure interest of my country, until people realize that science is not that. Which obviously the Aborigines realize because they say, what the fuck? <laughs> You're just screwing us using these arguments. And if I may add, if it's a good and strong argument, maybe at the first stance, in the end, I think it's, it was used to block some negotiation on, okay, uh, this guy is not part of the uh, treaty, because this guy is scientifically speaking not uh, part of the treaty. Uh, but in the end, it's also political and legal discussion. We, don't, we didn't have any legal issue or well-known legal issue on that, uh, for example, bring to a case to the ACG, uh, Fighter International Court of Justice. Uh, but political one, we had 10 years of negotiation on this subject. And f finally, it w science, even to the scientific arguments used to say, OK, no, it's not applicable. Politically speaking, there, there, are, there is discussion of it should be, or states want to, to have it. And in the end, if, science, uh, if political uh, negotiation can lead to an agreement that is contrary to science, it will be. And it's maybe the goal of also politics. And in the end, we had uh, on 20, December 22 an agreement for uh, global uh, for an agreement on the SI uh, on a fair and equitable. Uh, sharing of benefits without the question of access. Uh, they want to keep it open access and, and also a question of global funds uh, and, uh, for, uh, global funds for the benefits of digital sequence information. Uh, it's yet something to be negotiated. I think it will take a lot of time. Um, but we could see that it was a tool to avoid this question of uh, genetic materials who is not uh, yeah, it's not a hot p uh, political question anymore, uh, but if we have this political agreement in the end, science, it was just an argument mm -hmm. at the first stance. Uh, for me, it was more an argument to avoid to go into the uh, discussion and to close the door, but if we want to open a window and try to find another way, it's possible. Did you see in the history of these negotiations a change when they passed from non-digital information and digital information? Is there a change in the way people argue or defend their interests when we, we were defending seed banks and after that uh, digital sequencing? Actually, no. I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't looked at this question from... Uh, I know that from one chapter of, of my PhD, I will look to old uh, negotiation uh, to make any story for uh, for that, uh, and it's a question that I okay. have led for my last year. Uh, but I think it started in uh, ten years ago. Uh, but I will have a look. Here. It could be very interesting, uh, and thank you very much because I think it could really be valuable for my research. Other questions? Nobody? No questions? So should we go to the bar then? Time for a beer? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.